In order to be able to configure, manage, or troubleshoot a device, we have to understand how it works. Today we're going to talk about how the Layer 2 switch operates. So let's begin with the topology that I made from Packet Tracer. What we have here is PC0, PC1, and PC2. And each of them is connected to the same Layer 2 switch with a patch cable running down from each network card to the Layer 2 switch. Okay, what we have here is this symbol right here, this icon, represents the switch, the Layer 2 switch. These monitors here represent the computers. This is PC0, this is PC1, and this is PC2. And they're all connected to the same switch. This switch has four ports, and it has a patch cable that runs from the network card all the way to these switches. All right, that's what the black line represents. All right, let's move on. PC0 is connected to port 1, PC1 is connected to port 2, and PC2 is connected to port 3. And we're going to leave PC4 as blank. All right, so, P so 0 is connected to 1, PC1 is connected to port 2, and PC2 is connected to port 3. I gave each PC an IP address and a MAC address. PC0's IP address is 10.0.0.1, and the MAC address is 6800. The PC1 has an IP address of 10.0.0.2 and 6801. PC2 is 10.0.0.3, and the MAC address is 6803. Now, usually the MAC address is 12 digits long, but I shortened it for the ease of concept for this lesson. The x.x .x will represent the other eight characters. Now that we're familiar with how components are connected to the network, we can go ahead and see how data is transferred between devices. The thing you need to know about a layer 2 switch is that it is always listening and learning for traffic that passes through its ports. So let's say that PC0 wants to ping PC1. This is PC0, this is PC1. What it wants to do is send information to here, and the only way to get there is to use the switch that it's connected to. PC0 must broadcast its information in a frame and send it over the Ethernet from its network card and deliver it to the Layer 2 switch. From a learning perspective, a router wants to know the source MAC address so it can categorize all MAC addresses within its network. So when it comes into the network, it records where it came from and where it's going. If we were to open up the packet and look at the frame, you'd be able to see a few things. Among them, we would see so among them we would see the source IP address of PC0 and the source MAC address. Also, it would show the destination IP address and the destination MAC address of PC1 as well. The only thing the Layer 2 switch cares about is the MAC addresses. The IP addresses is at the Layer 3 level. So we're really not going to worry about IP addresses for the most part, but it is generally in with the packets that is sent over with the MAC addresses. All right. So if we actually look at this Wireshark analysis, Sorry about that. Um, we can actually see this is what the frame number five would look like. Right here it says frame number five. And it tells how big it is, how many bytes or whatever it's in it. But the important part is the Ethernet SRC, which stands for source. And this is the MAC address that's on here for the actual um, uh, MAC address. All right, and then the Internet Protocol version, this is the source. So this is the actual uh, IP address that it's um, it's coming from. The switch then catalogs the source MAC address from the frame of 6800 on port 1 slash 1. So it now has associated the MAC address with that port and knows to forward all destination MAC addresses 
to the network card on the PC0 from that point on. It needs at least one frame sent to it to make this happen. So basically what it does is in the packet, the packet would read source and then the MAC address x.x6800 .x and it knows it came through port 1 slash 1 so it's going to go ahead and put it on the table next to the MAC address. So for reference wise it always knows that everything that gets forwarded on, on this at this point will go to port number 1 slash 1 if it has a MAC address of 6800. So once PC1 has sent at least one frame out from, from the switch, it will listen for the frame and record 6801 as a source and associate port 1 slash 2. So basically, once this IP address sends a packet to the switch, any computer that sends a packet to a switch using a patch cable or some type of um, connection, it's going to use that port as a way to assigning it to that uh, MAC address. And the same goes for PC, PC2 down here. So PC2, this is the IP address, this is the MAC address. It sends it in frames across the patch cable and the switch picks it up and says okay since 6803 is coming through port 3 I'm going to dub the port 3 with the MAC address of 6803. The main concept of, of layer 2 switches is that a layer 2 switch is always listening for the source address and assigning them to the ports that they are coming in from. They do this by building a table for reference and can now forward information to other ports to reach the correct MAC address. So if a device sends a frame over the network where a new switch has just been installed, the switch would not have the information to forward those frames. It would have to push out a broadcast signal to all of its ports in hope that it would reach the correct MAC address. So if PC0 sent a packet to PC2 and the switch on the network had no reference of PC2's MAC address or port assignment, it would have to put it would have to broadcast to all its ports to ensure delivery by default. And the only other time it would send out a signal like that is if a device was to request a broadcast signal. A good example of this is a domain server pushing out updates to all devices on its network. So, new switches, new nodes, and broadcasts are handled the same way by a layer 2 switch. The only other caveat is that it will not send the broadcast back to the source address. That would be redundant. With this lesson, we took a look at how layer 2 switches operate on a network. I hope you gained some knowledge, and I hope you'll stay tuned for my next video. If you guys have any questions pertaining to this video, please contact me through Canvas, the Remind app, or email me and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Have a good day.